Hi, this is Kevin Blanche. I'm getting a lot of emails saying, where's your videos? Well, as I stated before, I've been working on my PhD and I've got a social study that I'm doing about America in the context of uh, education, knowledge, strength. And anyway, I've been doing this study. I did 2,000 videos with my camera, 2,000 interviews. I just did my 2,000th yesterday. And what I did is I just take a little clip and randomly, and I've used a very broad inset, big broad. I mean, I've went from college professors to all the way to, uh, you know, checkers at grocery stores, everything, anybody, you know, that I could find. And what I did is just a simple interview. What's your opinion of Congress? You know, we're talking nearly 100% go psychotic. Who's your congressman? That was the first question. Then I'd continue on in some of them, like, okay, a lot of them will rant. You know, I don't have to ask, I'll just continue. Well, that Nancy Pelosi, that Harry, I just tell them, well, do you know the Nancy Pelosi? Can you vote for her? They don't. I mean, it's, it's staggering how many people don't know that she's a congressman. And they're staggering to know how many people don't know the difference between a congressman and a senator. You know, and that they'll rattle off about Harry Reid. Well, I live right here. Harry Reid's Mormon. Believe it or not, he's a Mormon. You know, he went to college right here. Right here he went to college. And anyway, so they rattle off and carry on, blah, 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 blah. Well, I did my 2000s, and my studies in less than 5%. Less than 5% know who their congressman is. Right here. It's a guy named Rob Bishop, ex school teacher from Brigham City. The guy is pathetic. He's one of the most pathetic politicians in the history. He doesn't even go to work. Uh, there was a study where he, sh he doesn't even show up, but they don't even know who he is. But yet they'll rattle off about Pelosi or Reed. And I mean, you'd be amazed how many people, educated people, who think that they can vote for him, for Harry Reid, think they can vote for Nancy Pelosi. And then I, you know, and then I spew off, I go off a little bit, and I ask them, well, do you know the three branches of government? I mean, we're talking third, fourth, fifth grade questions. They have no clue. The, the statistic, you know, I, a lot of my interviews were done on a college campus. You would be amazed how many people in a university, a good university, have no clue about what even the three branches of government. Then I continue on. And I've got another uh, study that I'm doing, it's less interviews, that I go into a subset of questions that talks about, it's a study that was done 50 years ago, and I go into, name at least two Supreme Court justices. I take out a map and I show them a map with states on it, blank. And I leave California, Kentucky, and Minnesota blank. Sprinklers kicked on. But anyway, I leave those blank. And they have to fill them in. You'd be amazed how many people can't do this. And I'm doing this with high school students. One of my big uh, studies I'm doing are honor students from high school. And then I ask another question. I've got this poll, and you'll have to see this study. I'm getting ready to put this up. And I have five pieces of real iconic art. About I, I tried to find the most iconic American pieces of art I could find. Name. I used uh, Grant Wood's American Gothic. I used uh, Van Gogh's Starry Nights. I used uh, Monet's Haystacks. I used uh, a Pollock, you know. And then I used Warhol's soup cans. You know, I tried to stay as American as I could. Oh, and then I have uh, Picasso's Le Femme. And I, I hold it out. And I've done a lot of studies. I'm still working on this because I want to get 5,000 interviews in this. This thing is beyond pathetic. It's so sad. I mean, I'm up into the three or four hundred interviews now. Nobody, not one single person has got them off. Not one single person. Like I said, I'm conducting these interviews on a university for the most part. I mean, I went in front of the art building. These are art majors. I put it up. Had no clue. Didn't know who it was. None of them. I mean, it's pathetic. And then these guys will rant and rave and carry on. They don't even know what they're talking about. So I'm getting ready. That's what I've been up to. And that's what I've been doing. And my next set of videos that I put it up are fucking NAFTA. I'm, I'm really getting into this subject. It's the elephant in the room. 
Look, in this country, we could tie the BP thing, we could tie illegal immigration, we can, we can uh, tie the Wall Street scam, all of it, into one thing. One thing. This is pure philosophy. This is the haves versus the have-nots. This all comes down to wealth, coal, petroleum power, and shrinking. Look, the middle class in this country, from 1945 to 1975, was the strongest in the history of the world. The history of the world. They went to work with this philosophical, philosophical battle. And look, everybody wants to blame the presidents. Look, presidents, don't, they set some policy. They don't make law in this country. Congress makes law in this country. Congress, not the president. Not the president. That's, you know, that's one of the branches. He's the checks and out. He's the executive branch. But, and Congress is the voice of you and I. If you don't think it is, it is. If you want to bitch about Congress, they are the voice of you and I. Just like my study, they don't even know who they are. So this is, I'm going to get into this philosophical debate over the next few months. This is part of my PhD project, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about, you know, interviews that I'm doing on the haves versus the have-nots, and how the middle class has been totally destroyed. And everybody says, we're going to turn into a third world country, and we're destroying future generations. Forget the future generation thing. It's here, right here, right now. That It's here. The future generation is us right now. It is destroyed. It's been done. The damage is here. The middle class is destroyed in this country. This country is impoverished except for the, the upper class. And the upper class is fighting every way they can to keep it the way it is. I see these guys on CNBC go cycle about Wall Street. The earnings are just going crazy. The earnings are going crazy. These corporations make huge money, yet the stock market will not rally. Well, it's easy why the stock market will rally. The people that make the stock market rally is the fuel, the liquidity that makes it freaking rally is the 401k money of the working class America that's jumping in. They don't have any. And if they do, Wall Street's fucked them so fucking bad, they're like, fuck you, I wouldn't put money in there. I stuff it in my fucking mattress first. I'll go buy gold. I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't give these scumbags fucking money if they promised me fucking 200%. They fucked themselves. So they bury the middle class, they bury the middle class, and then they fucking wonder why their fucking stocks won't rally, but they don't care anyway. They're just robbing it off the fucking top. CNBC is part of that, and that is a conspiracy. And I'm not a conspiracy guy. That's a conspiracy. Wall Street is a conspiracy. And I'm going to get into that. I mean, I'm an ex-derivative trader. I'm an ass. I was on Wall Street for years. That is the biggest fucking scam in the fucking world. But anyway, Kevin Blanche, stay tuned. I'm going to be posting this study for my 2,000 interviews. Less than 5%, less than 100 people correctly identified their congressman in my subset of 2,000. Stay tuned.